All right, we are live right now. We're just getting ready to start recording our next episode of Build Your SaaS. How's it going, John? Good. It's been a while <laughs> since we recorded. It's true. Although it's, we've seen we've seen each other in person since. Mm-hmm. That's right. So and and once again didn't record. And once in again, person. once again didn't record. Yeah, it's <laughs> uh, it's hard when you're like in person. Yeah. I actually recently did a live stream of um, creating a podcast from start to finish, and I was pub- publishing it to Twitch and uh, pa- uh, Periscope and all those things. And uh, while I was doing that, I I got raided. Hmm? Yeah. I didn't know what that was either. Um, I don't know what that means. And it basically, it's supposed to be like, a nice thing, like a bunch of people are watching one stream and then they're like, oh, my buddy is, you know, (sighs) streaming over here. Uh, Let's all go raid him. And they did, but it wasn't fun because they just started posting spam in my chat. And uh, it was, I mean, it's not the, not the worst thing, but (laughs) um, here, I'll just show folks what I'm doing here. What what window am I showing? Uh, let's not show that. Okay. Um, just sending out an update, recording our podcast live. Uh, if you do join us while we're recording the show, we're going to hit record for the audio version right away here. But if you're listening live and watching live, I should say, um, just uh, say hi in the comments or ask a question in the comments. We often include those in the show. The show is Build Your SaaS, recording our podcast live, um, and uh, building a software product in public. That's kind of the the running, um, the running thread. Oh, actually, before we get into the show, did you watch the uh, the the uh, Apple thing? Did I? Uh, yeah, I watched some of it. I was I had some meetings too. Okay. Um, I I get less and less interested. Uh, like, yeah. I like them, but yes. I don't know. I I'd rather just read the recap. Yes. Honestly. Yeah. And there's some cool stuff. The new watch looks great as a as a runner. There's some cool stuff in that. Yeah. Um, new phone looks cool. I need a new one. It seems really ridiculous to spend much much money on a phone, but. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it 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 is like the other thing that's gotten a lot different is that it used to be pretty fun to hang out on Twitter during those. Uh-huh. And um it's just it uh, Twitter's changed their their API so you can't get like all the updates kind of in real right. time from your friends. There's an algorithm. And yeah, it's just not as fun. Uh Amy says she watched the replay on Apple TV so she can fast forward. That's a <laughs> yeah. That's a good way right. to do it. Good way to do it, Amy. Yep. Uh, the, I, I actually, I don't know if you caught the one um, 10 minutes before they went live. Tim, uh, Tim, who, who's the, the CEO? Uh, you know, CEO Tim. Tim Cook. Tim Cook. He tweeted something that said, uh, he's like, it was something like, oh, sorry, I don't. Can you get it here in eight minutes? And everyone was making fun of him like, oh, you look at you, old man. You thought you were texting somebody, but you ac- accidentally tweeted it publicly. Uh-huh. But then the opening, um, the opening uh, sequence, the movie, is all about them getting him this thing that he needs for the presentation. Uh-huh. I won't spoil it for you, but... Uh, yeah, that's what that's what happens. Uh, okay, so again, for those of you that might tune in while we're recording, we're gonna hit uh, record right away for the audio show. But if you have questions or comments, just like Amy popped in there, um, you can pop into the show, and we will, uh, yeah, we will respond if we can. Uh, yeah, it was a kind of a Mission Impossible theme. That's what Amy noticed that too. Uh, <laughs> all right. 
So tell me when you are ready to record. Uh, I'll show uh-huh. folks who are watching. This is our... I got, I got the wrong camera here. Hold on. Oh, there we go. There's the right one. Uh, this is our outline for today. We're going to be talking a little bit about the podcast market. And we're going to do some Patreon shout outs, give some yeah. updates. It's going to be exciting. If you have questions <laughs> about the... Uh, how you build software or build software in public, we're happy to answer those too. Um, hopefully this is working okay. You're, you're cutting out a little bit. It might be my internet, but it'll record fine either way. Yeah, we'll record the audio fine. Yeah. All righty. Um, All right. So, yeah. I'm ready if you are. Yeah, why don't you hit record and then we'll go into the intro. Sounds good. Hey everyone, welcome to Build Your SaaS. This is the behind the scenes story of building a web app in 2018. I'm John Buda, a software engineer. And I'm Justin Jackson. I'm a product and marketing guy. Follow along as we build Transistor.fm and Spots.fm and anything else we feel like building. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting a lot more sassy in those. Physical products, we could build a cabin. We do, we do have physical products. We have stickers and T-shirts. That's true. And pretty soon, well, I think the next thing we should do is uh, make mic cozies. <laughs> is that <laughs> so, a thing? I, well, is that what they call those things that like show the logo, like the, the radio oh, logo? I don't know. What are those oh, things called? Oh, yeah, right. I call them mic cozies. <laughs> I think that's a better name for it. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Let's do it. So before we get too far, we have a very special episode this week. We, we, we apologize for missing the last two weeks. We'll get into why in a second. But before we do anything else, we need to shout out somebody, Kevin Markham. Do you know who Kevin Markham is, John? I do know who Kevin Markham is. Kevin Markham is very special because he is our first Patreon supporter. And we need to give him uh, as many shout outs as we can this episode <laughs> because <laughs> he found our secret Patreon link in our show notes. We didn't really announce it. He just found it and plunked down, I think it's $10 a month. Yeah. And the, the, when we were building this, the, uh, the thing we'd, <laughs> we'd said was... Um, we would give people a shout out if they gave us ten dollars a month, and um, we forgot. We promptly forgot to give Kevin a shout out. And also, and also didn't. Yeah, and also didn't record episodes two weeks in a row. That's right. That's right. So, so we, I think, we owe Kevin a couple shout outs. Mm-hmm. Thanks, and, Kevin. Yes, thanks so much. Um, we don't normally shout out the you know your URL, but because Kevin, we have abused our relationship with Kevin. Uh, I want to say he's doing data science tutorials at patreon.com slash data school. So if you're into data science, go check that out. I'm assuming that's like doing uh, stuff in R and other stats languages. Could, could I think, be Python. I think, that's what, uh, I think that's what data scientists do. Uh, real-time follow-up, Amy Bauer, Bowser, Rollins, sorry, says uh, the, they're not called... Microphone, microphone <laughs> cozies. They are called uh, microphone flags, but it does that doesn't uh-huh. seem intuitive. She says so. That uh, there we go. That's what they're called. We need to make transistor flags. Yeah. Um, although on this live video, you can't see this. I can move my lo- our logo so it sits right on top of my microphone. So <laughs> I, there's there's augmented reality flags. That nice. we could sell those. Those are. A lot there cheaper go. to make. Got to make it. Got to make an app. Yeah, got to make an app. I think augmented reality was the cool thing about the the Apple, uh, the new Apple keynote that just happened. They they yeah, showed. Yeah, I feel all- like they're. Yeah, I feel like they're building up. Um, they're building up a lot of software in preparation for something else they're going to do in the next couple of years, probably around glasses that don't look like crap. Oh, interesting. I think I think they're because they have a lot of software. They have developers making stuff and getting used to it. And I think they're going to probably do something pretty big. It, I just obviously no one knows what, but 
I like this segment. This is uh, John's future tech predictions. <laughs> New segment, people. <laughs> we could we could do that sometimes. Give me give me a few beers and I'll just start rattling off my tech theories. Yes, I think we should. I I had a a pretty uh, not viral tweet, but a lot of folks responded to this thing where I asked, you know, what trend is just getting started now, but will be big in five years. Uh, non-gaming Twitch streams was one, which we're doing right now. So we're already ahead of the times. Uh, yep. Digital well-being was another one. I think that's going to be yep. big, like mindful applications. Yeah, that's mind- already pretty big. Um, lots of folks saying augmented reality. Yeah, some really cool remote work actually was another really big one that folks... Remote work's always kind of been around, but a lot of folks talking about it now... Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, interesting. Yeah, I like I like that idea of of uh, uh, I'll have to figure out a better uh, <laughs> jingle for it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, so we have some other we have some other Patreon shoutouts, right? Yeah. So our friend Adam Duvander. Adam has been uh, one of my longtime customers, uh, one of my longtime cheerleaders. I think he's at Zapier now or Zapier, however you want to say it. Okay. Uh, Kyle Marshall. Oh, Kyle, Kyle Marshall, is he? Oh, he's not a Patreon. I just wanted to talk about him separately. <laughs> um, oh, wait, is he the other Patreon? Hold on. Now now I'm confused. I, I think I mixed up our... Uh, our. So, oh. Hold on, folks. Sorry. This is, this is... We had Adam Duvander. Oh, Dan Weaver. Dan Weaver is our other Patreon. Thank you, yes. Dan. Okay, sorry. I... Uh, I just have in our show notes, <laughs> I have those names in the wrong spot. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you find our secret Patreon link uh, and you give uh, $10 or more, you will get a shout out on the show. Now we have it in our show notes, which is the best way to make something a habit. Yes. Um, uh, so what have we been up to lately? What, what, we missed a couple recordings. We missed a couple recordings. So I remember why we missed last week, but I don't remember why we missed so- the week before. Uh, it was Labor Day mm. in the U.S. and I believe Canada. That's right. Yeah, this and is... I was in Michigan, um, hanging out with my family. Yeah, you were probably hanging out with your family. Yep. We uh, didn't end up recording that. Yeah, that weekend at all. Yeah. And. And last weekend, obviously, was we were in Portland together for XOXO. Yes. You brought a microphone we should have recorded. Yes. Uh, for whatever reason, we didn't. Yeah. We were tired in the morning. We were just kind of... That seems to just always happen. It's it's hard yeah. to... Um, yeah, it's hard to figure that stuff out. Um, yeah, I I... Conferences and events are so much work already that uh, mm. yeah, it's it's tough to to uh, actually sit down and record something when yeah. there's people to see and you're out and you know XOXO in particular I think is quite uh, an exhausting conference because the topics are really deep. This is not your your conventional tech conference. We're talking about really. Um, deep issues like yeah. uh, you know uh, fair representation and um, you know how some there are certain groups that um, uh, the, you know the internet has not been kind to and right. uh, just rolling with all that material can be quite difficult so yeah it is uh, and for for me I think you probably handle this a little better for me the amount of social time and talking oh uh, yeah can like take its toll on me. Yes. Um, conferences like that, I enjoy because I get to kind of get out of my shell a little bit and meet new people and talk to talk to people. But like after a while, man, I just get I'm, I get so tired and worn out. Yeah. Um, not that I'm bored or anything. It's just like talking and. Yeah. Uh, Did, yeah. I, I have a question actually. When mm-hmm. so we stayed at we shared an Airbnb, yeah, which is pretty fun. I'd, I'd, I'd originally booked this Airbnb for my family because I thought we were going to yeah. drive down, 
And yeah. uh, then we ended up deciding it was first week of school. We're not taking yeah. the family to Portland. So then I asked you and your friend, Mike. Uh, Mike's my friend, too. Uh, yeah. But he's your longtime friend. If you yeah. would cancel your hotel rooms and stay, right. with, <laughs> stay with me. And I think, yeah. we, I think we realized it was, it, was, it was a pretty nice place. But it was really it was. well. It was you. You two became my de facto children in in that right. setup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a bunk bed situation. Nice. Bunk beds. Bunk beds are children's toys in the closet. Yeah, it's definitely set up for a family. Yeah, it was a good place for a family. Uh, um, on on Alberta Street, yeah. if folks have never stayed on Alberta in Portland, good place to stay. Nice area. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, when, I, I, when, I, I, yeah. Every time we got back from the conference, we would yeah. spend quite a bit of time just hanging out in the... Yeah. Now, it, for you, is that... Um, were you just overtired or is that like kind of important decompressing time? Do you like to have time where you're kind of hanging out with your friends afterwards? Yeah, I do. Yeah, small small groups. Small groups. Yeah. I mean, if, if it was like hanging out with 10 people, I probably would have been overwhelmed yeah but if it's a couple of people and you can ha- hash hash out the day and talk about stuff or even you know we talked about we we had we went into a deep dive of like pre-internet computer like bulletin boards and oh uh, yeah yeah we had a I little bit that. little nostalgia session uh, uh, that was fun um yeah if it's a bigger group where yeah it's same with like big dinners right i forget what the the rule of thumb is if it's like more than six or eight people at a table, like you can't really talk to everyone. Yeah. Or something like that. It's like, it just becomes overwhelming. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Interesting. Okay. I, yeah. Uh, cause I, I find like I would get home and I would be, I was m- more tired than you and Mike for sure. I was like ready to go to bed. Yeah. But, th- um, it felt like you two were like I mean, during of... the, during the day. <laughs> during the day, at the conference, I know you. Um, we talked with Dan uh, Meisner a lot. Yeah, Dan. We met Dan from Pacific Content, which was great. Um, super nice guy. Had a lot of good chats about podcasting, but you could talk about it a lot more than I could. <laughs> and I think at one point I was like, you know. Don't don't be offended if I just sort of like leave this conversation at some point because like I, for whatever reason I just can't I can't talk about it that much. Too much. You had you got to your limit. Yeah, that was a really interesting conversation. Um, yeah, I got to meet Kevin Blank. Kevin is in the uh, the uh, chat right now. Um, also, h- hello Ninja, Ninja Parade. That's a, a friend from the Laravel community. Uh, we got Merch Madness in on Twitch. Uh, for anyone listening to the audio version of this, we sometimes record these live. Um, oh, hold on, I'm getting a phone call. Uh, we sometimes retor- record these live, and you can watch us on Twitch, on Periscope, on YouTube. Yeah. But yeah, really great to see a bunch of folks. Um, yeah, so that that's why we didn't record these past two weeks. What else do I want to mention? Oh, I just want to mention two interesting conversations I had. So one was with Nate Smoyer. I think I'm saying that name correctly. He's a Transistor customer. And I think this is interesting because it shows that uh, the power of podcasting, even when you don't have a big audience. So he's just started his show. I think he's in real estate or something like that. Yeah. And he says he's been, he wanted to use the podcast as a, uh, you know, a, a prospecting tool. Like, how can I get more clients? And I, th- I think he's been doing a show for two or three weeks or maybe a month or I'm not sure how long, not very long. And he uh, has already got, he said he signed a dream client two weeks ago because of the podcast. Uh, talked with another one yesterday got invited to lead a panel and live podcast for an industry event. And this is all in a really short time span. And I, I think that's interesting. It, it shows the power of podcasting and uh, how people are getting value out of Transistor. Yeah. Uh, also had 
coffee with Kyle. Oh no, now now I don't have Kyle's last name. Um, <laughs> ah, uh, Kyle, my apologies. Oh, Kyle Marshall uh, from Media Lab in Calgary, and he was an early customer as well. And he also used the secret Patreon link that you can insert. Oh. And he said he he put it in, didn't tell anyone about it, and got a Patreon supporter right nice. away. He published his episode. So this is very cool. Yeah, it's it's uh, neat to see when you can build features or even just build software and have real people using it, and um, you know, get yeah, value and get, out of it. and get yeah, getting value outside of just recording a podcast that's right actually and we should talk Real, about like, business value out of it yeah and your friend um i'm sorry i can't remember her name now but she's starting a podcast with another fellow that we met at xoxo all around siri shortcuts oh yeah alex 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 cox in the, yeah it's already it's up it's already um what's it called that shows live let me see alex so uh, Alex is on Alex is on a number of other shows too. Oh yeah, she has there's Refresh. She's the resident podcasting uh I think it this it must be it's either oh maybe it's Supercomputer is that show. It's super Yeah, it's Supercomputer. Yeah, so check that show out. Uh got to talk to Matthew at XOXO and uh he was just saying I really appreciate what you two have built and Yeah. I think that is the advantage of going to events. If you're not someone who normally goes to events, right. you will be surprised how if you if you do go to like an event where the people that you know the people in your market hang out in, you'll be surprised how many people go, Oh yeah, I'm a customer and I love it. Yeah, it's great. It's great to hear. Um yeah, Matthew was the he was part of the team that built the software that it was called like a workflow or workflowy or something like that. Yeah. That Apple purchased and has since turned into Siri shortcuts, which just, I believe, just released today in the new iOS 12, which sounds really cool. Yeah. As a way to like automate Siri uh, and build your own like set of tasks that can kind of like play off each other. That's right. For, I think, for productivity geeks, uh, shortcuts is going to be huge. Yeah, you're gonna see a lot of anyone who is already into you know productivity hacks is going to be checking out, and it actually has a lot. Yep. It, it could have a big impact on uh, on podcasting because these are voice yeah. commands that are trying to replicate some of the utility you have on Alexa and Google Home, and yep. so uh, there is pa Pandora just added Siri shortcuts, so I think cool. we'll see. You know them in a yeah, way. yeah. As more and more apps add support, I think you, what it is you can like chain them together, right? So it's like I, I, an example, I guess, would be like let's say a podcasting. You could record a podcast on your phone, mm -hmm. maybe, and then have it automatically like upload somewhere else and post it somewhere, and maybe that's a shortcut you could build. I don't know, like publish my last episode, or I don't know. Yes, I'm, I just made that up, but <laughs> <laughs> you, you could you could build that out yourself and tie together a bunch of different apps. Yeah, yeah, I, I haven't had a chance to play with it. it. Is the new iOS out today? I think it's today. Oh wow! Okay, I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I thought for a topic today we would talk about the size of the podcast market. That was one of the um, the comments we had about our last episode. We talked about revenue. And, you know, uh, we've been exploring this idea of what does it really mean to bootstrap a software company? There's a lot of misconceptions. For example, yep. uh, I just wrote a newsletter this weekend that said, you know, we all, we, we treat, I, I'm c trying to deconstruct a lot of the base camp mythology. Because a lot of folks think that bootstrapping means you just with the power of your laptop and your skills and cloud computing, you can launch something on the web and then people will pay you and then you take that money and you build your company only from what customers have paid you. But in reality, that is not how most bootstrapped businesses are built. That's, that's a very, very narrow view of what it means to bootstrap. And 
Uh, it just doesn't reflect how most <laughs> most folks have built their <laughs> businesses. It's just not true. Right. And, uh, you know, one thing that 37 Signals, now Basecamp, did that a lot of folks don't know about is they were doing consulting while they were working on Basecamp. They were also selling digital products. Like they had a PDF download, which was like a, a search report for e-commerce companies. It yeah. Was, it was $99. They also did uh, workshops, like how we work workshops, uh, how we design yeah. workshops. And then they also did on-site training. And I found this great newsletter update uh, in, uh, from way, in Wayback Machine where Jason is giving this update. And uh, here, let me see if I can find it. The blog post is called Unconventional Bootstrapping Round One. But the, uh, yeah, and I have this great screenshot of, you know, this research report they were doing, on-site training. The, the workshop cost $395 to attend back in mm -hmm. 2003. Wow. But they were diversifying with multiple streams of income. And, you know, now we think of Basecamp as this very single product focused company. They, they only right. do Basecamp. But at the time, they had a ton of stuff going on. They really, yeah, they did. And uh, he, Jason writes this, this, this annual update. He goes, 2003 was a good year for 37 Signals. We got back on track after a challenging 2001, 2002 post bubble season. So I, I love that update because it just gives you this, this, view huh. into their world where it was like man they were it was like they they got hit by that 2001 2002 post bubble season they were struggling what do they yeah. do they have to hustle and so they're creatively figuring out ways to fund not just base camp development but their lives and their company so i thought that was yeah that was kind of interesting uh and uh, that's yeah, that's part of what we're exploring. But there was a listener who said, you know, you can't just talk about revenue in a vacuum. You have to talk about the size of the market. And we've touched on this briefly in the past, but mm -hmm. I thought we could kind of go over these things. And maybe what I'll do is I'll read out the stats and you and I can <laughs> react to <laughs> them in real time. Let's do it. All right. So uh, we've given this stat before. How many podcasts are there? The estimates are that there are 550,000 shows on iTunes and over 18.5 million episodes. So more than you could ever listen to. <laughs> more than you could ever. Well, it's like, <laughs> it's, like, it's like music, Apple Music or Spotify. I mean, there's millions and millions of tracks and you're not going to listen to 98% of it. Yeah. How maybe many, how many albums are on iTunes? That would be an interesting. So, yeah. um, let's see. No, not how much, how many albums total? Uh, let's see, man, there's not a good, I, I there's not a good Google scraped, um, <laughs> Let's see how many albums on Spotify. Maybe that'll that'll give us something better. Uh, hmm, no, there's not. I mean, I'm sure there's. It's an enormous amount. It must supersede uh, podcasts for sure. If oh, anyone, I'm sure. If anyone in the live chat can find what I'm looking for better than I can, you feel know, free to let us know. Going back decades of music. Um, yeah, that's a big market. Uh, you know, I think the question for us is how many of those are quality? Mm -hmm. How many of those are still active? Yeah. Um, how many downloads do they get? How many downloads do they get? The other thing I think that we are, we've talked about before and I think we're aware of is that podcast hosting, running a podcast hosting platform, like it's not, it's not an, it's not a type of application or service that's going to get like hockey stick growth where you release it and you make a post and all of a sudden everyone's going to sign up and start using it because they ha you really have to have a motivation to either start a new show or switch from a previous host. Yeah. Um, so like while the market is huge, it's, I mean, it's a big market. Um, yeah. 
there's free alternatives. There's, um, you know, people don't want to switch because they're just used to it and it's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the most common question we get is why should I switch from wh- wherever? And right. I think increasingly we're ha- we have better answers to that. Uh, and we have some features that we're going to be releasing soon that, you know, kind of edge us up even more. And, you know, this promotions feature, which we've talked about in, in previous episodes, uh, that feature, I think, will be a game changer for us in terms of really defining this is who we are, this is who yep. we're for, and this is what we, this is what Transistor does for people. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of competition out there. Uh, the, I think the, your comment about, like, we can't really look, like, look at that as our potential market because it's really hard to get people to switch from one host to the other really our our market is for businesses and professionals and brands and personalities that have always wanted to start a show and we know you're out there right now listening to us and if that's you (laughs) (laughs) transistor.fm but the you know, that's our market is folks that are thinking about it who have said, oh, I really want to start a show. I've got a great concept. I just need to get started. Uh, or, you know, I, I've seen how podcasting can help other businesses. I want to start a podcast for my business. Or, you know, I yep. I have a great co-host and a great topic. We just need to get going. So... <laughs> This is awesome. Chris just posted his uh, his uh, referral link in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fine. Go go ahead, Chris. Yeah. I, I respect the hustle. Uh, transistor.fm <laughs> slash question mark via equals Chris. Uh, we do have a, gr- a lot of folks signing up for the uh, the referral uh, thing. And yeah, I think it's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, we had to keep on top of that. Yeah. Yeah, we have to. We, we're going to pay out those in bulk right now. So we just, I think we just got an email from that company, Rewardful, about some updates. I haven't really read it, but mm-hmm. um, cool. Yeah, so that's that's how many podcasts there are. Here's, uh, I, I'm going to tell you some stats that concern me, and then I'm going to. I think we can. Uh, yeah. We, we, we we'll, we'll do the dark side <laughs> and the the light side. Sounds good. So, 64% of the U.S. population is familiar with the term podcasting, up 60% in 2017. So, that's one. I'm going to keep going here. 44% of the U.S. population has listened to a podcast ever, up 40% in 2017. 26% listen to a podcast at least every month. That's up from 24%. And 17%, 48 million Americans listen to podcasts weekly, up 15% in 2017. And if you look at the growth rate... Yeah, from 15%, yeah. If you look at the growth rate over time, it is not growing at a crazy rate. Every year it notches up a couple percent. So 17% mm-hmm. this year, up from 15% last year. And I would say that that does concern me in a sense because w- there are some people who are investing in podcasting because they are hoping it's going to be the next YouTube. Right. They're hoping it's going to be the next big thing. And... I think so far we haven't seen that happen. Uh, podcasting has been around for a long time before you yep. before YouTube even. It's been around, yeah. And so Apple, yeah, Apple added it a long time ago. Yeah, they, it gets its name from the iPod. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it, it it has never had this kind of hockey stick growth that a lot of venture capitalists and other folks are looking for right it it just has never um grown that fast right it's slow and steady every year it adds a couple percentage points at least in terms of the data we have right now and 
you know, that uh, I, we can take this a few different <laughs> ways, can't we? Uh, now, one thing that would be interesting is how many people want to start a podcast? Has that changed? Right. I think so. Yeah. I don't know if we have that number. No. I, um, yeah, I don't know. These numbers, uh, I don't know if they con- it's, I don't know if they concern me too much. I mean, it's growing, but it's already, it's a, it's already a big number. Yes. Like, I mean, it's, well, 48 million people listen to a podcast weekly. It's, that's a, it's a big audience. Yes, um, it's a big audience, but the, there's other folks that will say, like, you know, um, uh, radio. Do, do they call it terrestrial radio? Is that what they say? Uh, uh, yeah. So AM, FM is still huge, huge, huge compared to podcasting. Yeah. Uh, also, in terms of the number of advertising dollars that gets put into podcasting, uh, I think podcasting hit $350 million last year, but... Uh, radio advertising is in the billions. So it, it is a big, uh, on one hand, you're right. Like that's, that's a big group of people, 48 million yeah. listening to a show every week. And, you know, our little show gets 1200 listeners a week or something. Um, like regular listeners. Let's just see here. Yeah. I think we have some, yeah, 1,231 uh, subscribers for mm. the show here. That's, you know, that, and for us, that number of people has been great. Those are diehard fans that are really invested in what we're doing here. Yeah. But the, the, the question for us, and it's not something we have a lot of data around, is... Our hypothesis is that there are going to be more personal brands, more businesses, more um, you know, uh, folks who want to do podcasting professionally that are going to want to start new shows that will want to start a show on Transistor. Yeah, I think I think that's a, a accurate a hypothesis. Like I. It's becoming, yeah, I think it's becoming, you know, more well-known, you know, slowly. But I I don't know. Starting a show is, is easier now. Mm-hmm. Um, you can test it. You can test it out pretty easily. You can make it sound good, you know, with a few few small tricks here and there. Yeah. Um, yeah, people... I've seen a few jokes around, I don't know, on the internet or Twitter or something like yada, yada, yada is the new, I want to start a, or starting a podcast is the new, yes, whatever. Yes. I'm going to start a band or something like that. That's right. It's becoming a little bit of a meme. Yeah. But what other evidence do we have right now that our hypothesis is correct? Because there's a lot of people listening to the show that want to build software and we can all just come up with things off the top of our heads and go, I think this is true because I really want <laughs> my software to succeed. Uh, right. So w- are we just blindly believing this as truth or is there other things that we've seen that are making us go, okay, I think there's something going on here? Well, I mean, for me, in the office I'm in, uh, like, it seems like everyone has a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> or they have multiple. I mean, it's. I, I know. I mean, I'm in a space that's probably a little bit different than most offices, but there's. I don't know. There's a, tons of shows being recorded out of here. Um, coworkers have started shows, multiple shows. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, I think th- uh, so. Folks always want to know anecdotally. I uh, sorry. Folks want to know what the the data says. So what what does the quantitative stats say? And I think you need to look at those for sure. But one thing, uh, one thing about those that kind of data is it's a lagging indicator. Meaning you have to go out, you have to do the survey, you have to process the data, and then you report on it. 
And the challenge, as we've seen with some presidential elections, is that sometimes the data that you're collecting quantitatively does not actually represent reality. Right. And so the, there were folks in the presidential election, for example, that were on the ground, you know, hanging out in communities and were saying, you folks don't understand what's happening. On the ground, this is what we're seeing. And we know it's not reflected in the data yet, but this is what we're seeing. And sure, if it's just um, one area, then that might not be meaningful. But once you can link together a bunch of qualitative data, so observed data, anecdotal data, once you start linking those together and you're saying, well, this is happening in this community, in this community, in this community, it gives you... Uh, at least a, a, a perspective that hmm, maybe something else is happening that's not being reflected in these official stats we're getting. Mm-hmm. And I think what's interesting about podcasting is it's starting to pass the coffee shop test, which is something I just made up. And <laughs> I don't know if you do this, but this is I, I spend a lot of time in coffee shops. And I one of my favorite things to do is just to eavesdrop. <laughs> Yeah. On, on what other people are talking about because it, it helps give me a pulse of what normal, unquote, normal people are thinking about, listening, engaging with. And it was one of the reasons I, I knew that uh, the iPhone was going to be huge is I was on the bus and people are talking about it. Like normal non-Apple nerds are saying, wow, this new phone's coming out. looks really interesting. And you could, you could kind of feel the energy building. Uh, same way with Netflix. Once, once I started, I'd, I was like one of the first people to do the cord cutting, you know, where you, you cancel cable and yeah. you just go all in on Apple or whatever. And I was a weirdo forever. But as soon as we started having, you know, at parties or whatever, people would say, oh, yeah, I just quit cable and got this Apple TV. Have you heard of this thing? You just get this Apple TV and then you use Netflix and it's, there's no commercials. It's, as soon as it starts to pass that test, I go, this thing is mm-hmm. going to be big. Yeah. Increasingly podcasting, I'm, you know, I'm in the coffee shop and I'm hearing normal people, like just normal you know, uh, parents out after school with, you know, talking to other parents going, have you heard the latest Tim Ferriss? Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, wait a second, what's going on here? You know, ten years ago they would have been talking about Oprah, and now they're talking about Tim Ferriss. Like, yeah, this this there's yeah, something going on that is observed. Uh, you know, at my last family reunion, we have all sorts of you know folks at different ages and different political stripes and different you know uh, different stages of life. And they're all listening to podcasts. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've encountered this with my family and my friends, where it's it's along with, or sometimes in place of, you know, what are you watching these days? It's uh, what are you what are you listening to? What you know what what podcasts are you listening to? Or um, are you caught up on this one? I really like this one. Um, yes. Yes, um, recently with my brother and then my dad too, and we just like recommend all the same ones. We can talk about them. It's yeah, it's like it's like a TV show. I mean, it's yeah, it's be- it's a it's a fixture of of uh, the culture now in society. Yeah, and uh, again, maybe maybe we're wrong. Maybe we are in a um, admittedly white educated uh, group, right? But. I'm I'm seeing this in other groups too. It's not just um, uh, you know, it's not just one particular demographic. It seems to be multiple demographics, and it is kind of like you know, in the old days, it would be you know, what apps do you have on your phone? Now it's yeah. uh, you know, what what are you listening to? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think what's great about it too is that it is very accessible. Mm-hmm. It's free. Yep. Um, smartphones are not necessarily expensive, especially in the U.S. and and you know probably Canada and Europe and stuff. It's not the device itself is not inaccessible. You can listen to it on the web for free. Mm-hmm. Every every 
phone, whether it be Android or iOS, can you know has podcasting listening apps. Um, everyone's got headphones. Everyone walks around with headphones. Yeah. So it's it's a very you know it's you don't have to sign up for a cable fee. There's no you know subscribe to Netflix. Uh, you don't need some big piece of equipment for it. Mm-hmm. So really, it's a, it's a very approachable market. I think my my worry is that as it grows, it's going to become more and more commercialized in a way that is detrimental to podcasting. Yes, some folks might try to to lock things down. And yeah. Yeah. The. Uh, yeah, and in the the live chat here, you know, folks folks have said a few things. One is it is still lots of work to produce a podcast, a good podcast, you know, in terms of editing and other things. It's not as easy as composing a tweet, um, right? Which is both a pro and a con, you know. If it it means that, for example, I I'm not one of these folks that feel like podcasting needs to be democratized. I think podcasting is broadcasting, and you need to be you need to have good uh, we always say good content but it needs to be entertaining it needs to be interesting it needs to be compelling and Mm -hmm. uh there's uh i did a a twitter poll on the transistor fm uh twitter account and uh the the results are basically i said i was trying to get at like what are most podcasts doing wrong and so i would say you know too many podcasts are you know, too long, have bad sound, aren't regular enough. But the number one response, 32% said, too many podcasts aren't entertaining. Yeah. And so the, 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 the problem, you know, even <laughs> people always complain about bad sound. But if, you know, Seth Godin has a podcast that is called Akimbo that I just love. I think it's excellent. And... The, <laughs> the his sound quality is not great. It's kind of echoey in the room. Uh, you know, his editing's pretty good, but the what keeps me coming back is that his sound is good enough, but the show is so compelling. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, yeah. So I think I think there there's. Uh, uh, that it doesn't need to be democratized. The bar is high, but if you can create something that's interesting and compelling, then you know you have a good chance of carving out some listenership for yourself. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's th- yeah. I think that's a pretty good overview of of how many folks there are. Um, that branded podcasting is growing. Uh, we I'll link this yeah. up in the show notes. There's yeah, it's a it's a it's a big market. It's not growing super fast. Obviously, we have some concerns that we are aware of, but uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I think it's I feel like it's still in its in its infancy to some degree. Yeah. Or yeah, we'll see. And who knows? There's it, all of a sudden every car manufacturer could come out with a podcast receiver, and you know all of a yeah. sudden people just click the radio and they're yeah. listening to podcasts. So. Yeah. Anyway, that's something we might come back to. Uh, check our show notes, by the way. I'll, I'll add in some other uh, some other evidence for the increase of branded podcasts. Mm. Uh, good articles by Fast Company and things. Let's uh, let's close the show out with just a few app updates. So yeah, what have you been working on? So there's a lot there's a lot in the works. Um, I haven't released anything big lately, but there's a a number of two or three big things that we'll, we'll get out the door soon. Um, the one thing that we did release uh, that maybe no one really noticed was kind of re-engineered um, how we how we categorize uh, downloads. Okay, yeah. Um, on a, well, let's see, on a, uh, let me try to explain this. So um, previously... Sometimes uh, a download or a listen would be categorized incorrectly as far as like wh- what app was listening to it. Mm. Um, we were we were missing some applications from our list of supported applications. We were there were some false false uh, 
positives? Posit- positives, negatives, false positives, <laughs> where things were being incorrectly identified. Um, so if, you know, in, in a couple of cases, some of our, our customers were, were seeing that like, other uh, the category other was the app that like eighty percent of people listen to and it's just like that's oh, wow. a little bit suspect. So, um, we were just some of our app detection was a little bit incorrect. Um, so I reran that. None of the download numbers changed, but your um, your breakdown of how it was listened to should be much more accurate. Oh, cool. Uh, as well as I reran all the downloads and categorized. Um, regions for a, a number of countries so canada the u.s and australia have either states or provinces um, oh really so downloads are now being um, counted on an individual like state or province level we're not displaying that in the map yet but that will be coming next as well oh cool so you'll be you'll be able to zoom in on the u.s and canada and australia and see like what what states are popular and stuff like that interesting um, uh, Australia, I think, is our... Oh, United Kingdom is our second most popular. Okay. Then Canada, and then Australia. Cool. Yeah, nice to see what where everyone's listening from. Um, still finishing up uh, Spotify analytics ingestion. So uh, along with downloads, like, I... You don't... There's no way that um, people can listen on Spotify and have that be reflected in Transistor yet. They kind of keep all that data in their system, but if you have submitted your show to Spotify through Transistor, uh, we have API access to all their analytics on a day-by-day basis, so we'll pull that into to your numbers um, soon. Sweet. There, uh, we've, we started working on some translations Mm-hmm. International translations for people's um, customers' podcast sites. If you host a, sh- a site on your transistor account for your show, we're going to have a, a drop down with I don't know, a handful of other languages that kind of um, make the the interface elements, you know, buttons and links um, uh, internationally translatable to things like Spanish, Portuguese, German. Uh, French, I think, for now. Yeah, that'll be great. So we're building that out. And then the big one that is hopefully coming soon that I worked on yesterday a bunch um, is this new integrations tab that I'm building out. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move some things there, like your newsletter integration and submitting to Spotify. And then there's also two new integrations, which are uh, hooking up your Twitter account and or your Google slash YouTube account to Transistor mm-hmm. so they can auto post uh, auto post uh, episodes, notifications to Twitter when, uh, when they're published, and then also auto post um, audio to YouTube. So we'll convert your audio to a video file and automatically upload it to your YouTube channel of your choice. Cool. Uh, are you yeah. are you thumping a table or something? It, it's I'm I'm hearing a. I must be. Yeah, I think I, I'm like. <laughs> I'm hearing a I'm, lot. I'm like. A lot of bass. Yeah. Tapping on my desk as I talk <laughs> points. Um, so yeah, that stuff's coming along pretty well. I'm kind of just putting the finishing touches on the the integration stuff, but it's. That'll be so be, fun. Should be pretty cool. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So that's that's. Uh, we should probably have that. You, some of that stuff might get rolled out this week, even. Yeah, this week I, I I would say a lot of that stuff. Yeah, late this week, next week, this weekend probably. Cool. So we'll uh, we'll send out an update newsletter to people probably. Yeah, yeah. We we like to keep people informed at what's coming down the the pipe. Yeah. Um, yeah, folks. I think we're gonna end it here. Thanks again to everyone that showed up live. Oh, we got to give a shout out back to Kevin Markham. Thank yep. you so much Thanks, for, Kevin. for being our first Patreon. Patreon.com <laughs> slash data school is his. Patron number one. Patron number one. And uh, we are transistor.fm on the web. Uh, you can reach out to us on Twitter at transistor.fm. And uh, this show is Build Your SaaS. And the only way that people find out about it really is by telling a friend 
And so, uh, or just even telling folks on the internet, I, I've noticed it's showing up in uh, indie hackers quite a bit. Folks saying, hey, what are the best, you know, indie podcasts to listen to or shows about bootstrapping? And uh, some folks posted this show in that comment thread. Cool. We really appreciate every time someone mentions the show. Um, yeah, just thank you for doing that and thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. Cool. So I'm going to hit stop record. Yeah, I'm going to export this. Um, I'm going to show folks who are still watching me live what I do here. I just recorded this in ScreenFlow. So cool. I, I, got, a, I got a jet here. Yeah, that's cool, man. Uh, I'm gonna right. I'm gonna stick around in live chat if anyone wants to ask questions. Everyone, say goodbye to John. Wave. Bye, do, everyone. Do the Bye, internet. Wave an emoji. I'll talk to you soon, John. Bye, Justin. See talk to you soon. All right. So I am. Uh, yeah. So I always record inside of uh, inside of ScreenFlow. Here, it just seems to be the best way to capture my microphone audio. One thing that's weird is that um, the Sia Fran, thanks for being here. Um, by the way, like I said, I'm going to stick around. So if you have questions about podcasting or SaaS or anything else, there was a question about what's the what do you guys recommend for learning JavaScript? Uh, I'm probably not the best person to answer that question, but if you have an answer for T-J-I-S scoping, let me know. Uh, anyway, this is how I do it. And uh, this is weird. This is so low. Let me hear this. Oh, this is just me. They, they feel active straight in. Okay. So anyway, so this is, uh, this is the audio I'll give to Chris, our editor. He was in chat earlier today. And uh, thanks, Carl, for being here. First live episode you've watched. That's great. Yeah, we like to do this. It's a kind of an interesting kind of bonus for, for folks. You know, you get to see how the sausage is made a little bit. Uh, yeah, and if you're interested in learning JavaScript, Carl recommends free Code Camp. That's where he's learning right now. Uh, I also do a, a series on these channels, on Twitch, on Periscope, and on YouTube called Dumb Programming Questions. I'm just an idiot that's trying to learn some programming myself. And so you can look for those. Um, I try to do those every couple weeks. And uh, the nice thing is I've got a lot of friends who are incredible developers and they often show up in the comments or they call in and they help me out live. And I'm not afraid to ask the, the really dumb questions, the questions that are, you know, a lot of folks uh, would be embarrassed to ask maybe. So anyway, so I'm going to export this for Chris. Uh, actually, I got I to gotta, I gotta cut some of this out. Uh, where did we start? Pretty fun to hang out on Twitter during those. I can't remember where I started. Uh, I'll just export the whole thing. It's okay. So I export this as a lossless audio file. It's going to be really big. It's going to be 830 megabytes. But Chris likes to have the uncompressed audio. So, And then typically what I'll do is open up Dropbox. And... We have a Dropbox folder. Oh, we need to create a new episode, new folder for this. So this will be, is this 27? Anyway, so then we just drop the, um, drop the audio. Where is that? How come it's not? Uh, oh, it's not. Oh, yeah. Oh, here it is. So. Yeah, just drop that into Dropbox, and then Chris gets it, and he edits it for uh, the show tomorrow. All right. Um, yeah, anything else before 
I say goodbye today. Anyone else have a question or anything? All right. Well, thanks, folks, for hanging out again. Um, yeah, these these live shows are really fun just to get your comments live. Sorry I wasn't able to get to everything. Um, I think uh, Q Harrison had a really good point about... Um, where am I going to put this? I'm going to delete this here. Just that diversity in podcasting is going to lead to even more compelling entertainment. And honestly an expansion of the market. Um, you've got examples like Black Panther and Crazy Rich Asians that you know uh, have done very well commercially and have shown that there is lots of opportunity for, um, for diversity in media. And uh, that's exciting too. And that means that if we have been depending on this, whatever, white educated um, market for podcasts up till now, that there's a lot of opportunity for it to grow just because it hasn't been that diverse yet. And as we add more diverse voices, the market will expand. So that'll be interesting to watch. All right, folks, I will see you on the internet. Talk to you later.